All right, so now we're going to finish section 8.2. And remember, this video, video two, is going to be specifically about 30, 60, 90 triangles. Now, one of the things that you have to be able to identify in a 30, 60, 90 triangle is which leg is going to be your longer leg and which leg will be your shorter leg. And remember, we can tell or identify that since 30 is greater than, or I'm sorry, since 60 is greater than 30, this leg here will be our longer leg. And since 30 is less than 60, that means this leg has to be our shorter leg and then this will be our hypotenuse. So that's what you need to be able to identify or find when we're using the 30, 60, 90 triangle. So remember, just like the 45, 45, 90, it allows us to come up with these properties to use shortcuts in determining the sine lengths and that we don't have to use Pythagorean theorem. So like I said before, if I give you this triangle, 30, 60, 90 triangle, and I tell you that this is equal to two, we can't solve for our hypotenuse or the other leg without any of these shortcuts. So something that we once could not do, we now can. All right, so now you just have to, to remember these properties just like we did with the 45, 45, 90. They have their own properties that you'll have to remember. All right, now for the 30, 60, 90 triangle, the properties that we have, instead of labeling this S and S here, I'm going to label this SL for shorter leg. So that means this will be SL times the square root of three. I just think it's easier to remember SL as your shorter leg instead of just S. All right, so the two formulas that we have to remember is our hypotenuse is simply twice our shorter leg. So if we go back to this question here, this is our shorter leg. So quickly we can say our hypotenuse is four because it's twice our shorter leg. And then our longer leg is equal to the square root of three times our shorter leg. So once again, we can go right back to here and say since this is our longer leg, since this is our longer leg, we know that this is simply just equal to our shorter leg two times the square root of three. So we were quickly and easily able to solve for the rest of that triangle. All right, so these are two formulas that you will have to remember and you'll write these out. Hypotenuse is equal to your shorter leg times two or your longer leg is equal to your shorter leg times the square root of three. All right, so those are some formulas that you'll have to remember. All right, now let's go ahead and solve a problem with this. So what is the value of D in simplest radical form? So we want to know what the value of D is. So this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle and 30 is our shortest, I'm sorry, D is our shortest leg opposite 30 and 60 is our longer leg. So since we only want to find what D is equal to, we only will need that our longer leg is equal to our shorter leg times the square root of three. That's all that we need to use for this formula, for this equation, because we only want to know what D is. So we really don't care what our hypotenuse is at this given moment. All right, so we will substitute in. Our longer leg we know is five. Our shorter leg is D, so D times the square root of three. So then we will divide each side by the square root of three. So D is then equal to five over root three. And remember, we can't leave a radical in our denominator, so we have to rationalize, just like we had to do in the other video. All right, so we will multiply this time, though, by the square root of three over the square root of three. Remember, this is simply equal to one, so it's not changing the value of anything. And by multiplying by the square root of three, we know the square root of three times the square root of three is equal to the square root of nine, which is equal to three. So that will eliminate our radical in our denominator. So after we multiply through, we will get D is equal to five times the square root of three over the square root of nine. And then D is equal to five root three over three, because the square root of nine is three. Nothing can reduce, nothing can simplify, so that's our final answer. That is what D is equal to. Five root three over top of three. Now, if they did ask for F, we would just have to multiply this by two, and it will become 10 root three over three. So we're able to quickly and easily solve for all of the sides of the triangle. All right, now we're just gonna go over the last example. An artisan makes pendants in the shape of equilateral triangles. And the height of each pendant is 18 millimeters and remember the height is our altitude so that would be a point that goes from one of our vertex or vertices that is perpendicular to the other side so the height is 18 millimeters what is the length um, s of each side of the pendant nearest pendant to the nearest tenth of a millimeter so we're not going to leave this in radical form we're going to find this to the nearest tenth All right so for this one since this is perpendicular 
and it's equal angle, equal angular, we know that this side will be congruent to this side here. So this is going to create two congruent triangles because it's side angle, side angle, side angle, side. So that means that these two angles here are going to be the same. And since it was 160 degrees, we would divide it by two. So that means each angle is then 30 degrees. All right, so now, because of this, we have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. We have 30, 60, and we know that this is equal to 18. So we need to solve for our sides. So now, since none of our formulas include the hypotenuse and the longer leg together, what we will do then is we will just solve for our shorter leg and multiply it by 2. All right, so we have our longer leg because we know that this is 18 and then we're going to solve for the shorter leg. So then our longer leg, 18, is equal to our shorter leg, which we'll just say x, times the square root of 3. We'll divide each side by the square root of 3. So x is equal to 18 divided by the square root of 3. Remember, we can't leave a radical in the denominator, so we're going to rationalize. So then x is equal to 18 root 3 over 3, and that will reduce to 6 root 3. So that means this hypotenuse, or this side, is double that, so it'll be 12 root 3. So that means all of these sides are 12 root 3. Now they didn't ask for us to leave it in radical form. They asked for us to multiply it out. So then you will just multiply this using your calculator, and you would get it's approximately, that x is approximately equal to 20.8 millimeters. So that means each side is approximately 20.8 20 millimeters. All right, that is it for this video, and that's it for this section.